my name is Bernie Hogan and I'm a member of the Network Canvas development team. Uh, today I'd like to show you how to manage ego data or data about a respondent in a survey in Network Canvas. So in order to do that, there's two general scenarios that I'd like to demonstrate today. The first scenario is when you think of the um, respondent just as a respondent, that they're just um, free recalling data about their alters or about themselves. They may be sampled from a population or otherwise surveyed um, independently. The second way is when you have a roster of data. So a roster would be a list of people that you already know, and then with that list, you would select which one of them is the respondent. And then you want to do things so that you either filter to the respondent or to everyone else. So to get started, we have some example uh, protocols to use today. The first one is a very simple protocol, and it's just going to show how to use ego as a respondent. So I'm going to double click on this. Um, when you double click on a network canvas file, you know, we have a number of programs, but it does automatically open up in Architect. And this is where we design our surveys, and you can have a look at it. So of course, we have a protocol description as usual, and I put together an info stage and an ego form example. So the first thing I'd like to do is show how we can see a preview of this ego form example as it's currently built. So when you click on, and you saw that, I can cancel. When you click on this ego form example right here, it opens up and shows all the options involved. Before we get into those, let's see how it actually looks. This is the stage itself, and it looks like a survey. We have a place where we can enter in things like the respondent's name uh, and um, a different kind of question control. This one is ordinal, so it's asking, what's your favorite color? This, of course, is just a preview screen. So I will close that down, and we can look back at the form itself. It's not one that collects live data. So what have we done here? Well, first, we're going to ignore skip logic for now. But let's see, we have a stage name. Now, this is the stage name internal to the program. So I call it ego form example. Then we have information about ego as the title up there and introductory text. Below that is the form. And the form is where we collect a whole series of data about ego themselves. Now you can see here we have a number of fields. The first one represents, um, and when we click on them, it gives extra data. The first one represents name. So this is what we saw earlier. It's, we called it name. And then here's the question prompt. So this is the label of the variable that you'll see in any exported data. And this is the question prompt that the user is going to see the respondent. Now below is an input control. And that's the name that we give to the type of way in which data is fed in. There's a variety of input controls. But of course, for name, we're using text input. You can see for text, we have a couple different uh, options here, input or area. We don't validate name in this case, so we don't ask for any extra uh, detail about it. We have another one here using radio color, and this is using um, the radio group input control. We could create a, an extra variable here. Let's say if we wanted to um, learn more about ego, and we can create a new prompt down here. So for example, I can call the variable we have one here called age. And then here's a question prompt. We can say, what is, is your age? Now for that input control, if it's already been selected here as number input. So we have here number input for age, and we're going to save and continue. So we have three here now, three fields for ego. Now if we look at it in the preview, we can see we have name, the color, and age down below. So now we'll just look at a different form. And in that form, we have ego as, as an alter. So we say ego is an alter because we, that means that ego is available as one of the people you can uh, select. And now we have a different set of stages here. Again, I have an info stage at the beginning to say welcome. And below that, now there's a name generator stage. If you haven't seen one of those before, this is where we elicit data about uh, different nodes. Now there's four different kinds of name generator stages available in Network Canvas. I'll just show them here, but we'll cancel. Using forms, using quick add, using a small roster and a large roster. 
The small roster presents all of the data. The large roster presents the data in a way that you can type in and uh, reveal some of them, just like an autocomplete, perhaps on uh, Facebook or Google. Um, and above here, we have name generators where you can quickly add people. Now, in this particular case, you can see uh, for the name generators above that they have these panels on the side. And those panels, just like down here, can be pre-populated with individuals. So that's what's happened up here. If we go in here and preview this, and just to refresh um, from other work, this previous interview is a CSV file of names that we're going to use. You can see more about that in the videos on configuring name generators. Please locate yourself in the list on the side panel and drag the circle into the main window. So, oh, let's say uh, there's no Bernie here, so I'll just pick this George fella and drop George into the main window. Now you'll notice I can also add an additional node in here. That, unfortunately, is a uh, constraint or feature of Network Canvas, wherein we don't constrain the number of nodes you can nominate on any given window. So you really have to cross-check that in your own study and make sure that people are only nominating one person. And what do I do with this extra person? What do I do with Frank? Well, when I grab Frank, uh, or the circle representing uh, Frank, you can see a trash bin shows up. So I'll drop him in the trash bin. And it says, I've located myself. Well, what to do next? Let's press the down arrow. And you'll see the prompt above changed. Actually, you can also see very lightly that there are these two light circles above and that this is the second prompt for that circle. So it says, select anyone you have spoken to in the last three months and drag the circle into the main window. So we'll say uh, this James, uh, look down through all of these here. There's an awful lot. All seems uh, some uh, relatively male names here. Well, let's see, uh, Leonard and Marion. So these are three names. We can say that I've spoken to James, Leonard, and Marion in the next, in the last three months. So moving on now, we can enter data about all these people. But what do we see here? We actually see that George, ego in this case, is in fact one of the alters. But it doesn't really make any sense for me to say, how often do you see each of these people? And then, well, George will say, well, I mean, I see myself every day. <laughs> So it's, what we really want to do is find a way to first nominate ego and then filter ego out from the rest of the nodes. So if we go down uh, back into architect, cancel there, we can see we have an ordinal bin demonstrating filter. Well, we didn't actually filter any data, did we? Well, how can we filter ego out? Let's, uh, we first would want to create a variable and make that variable say, call it is ego, and we make it true in the circumstance where someone has nominated themselves as ego. How do we do that? Well, let's go back here into the name generator screen. You'll notice that we had two prompts. Please locate yourself in the side panel, and then select anyone you have spoken to in the last three months. Well, when we go into this one right here, we can see assign additional variables. And we've created a variable called is ego, and you can see it's toggled on, but it says true. What does that mean? That means that every time we nominate someone using this prompt, they're going to additionally get a variable called is ego, and they're gonna have that variable equal true. And everyone else in the data set is going to not have a value of true. So we can use that as our filter. So now down here, we have an ordinal bin demonstrating filter. So we don't have any filters involved. Let's create one. We can check on that and add a rule. So I'm going to add a rule on alter because we want to filter out or in alters. So what type of node? Well, we only have one type of node at the moment, person. So we click that. And is it an alter type rule or an alter variable rule? Well, actually, it's about a variable because we just created it. And that variable is called is ego. So we select is ego, and then we say is exactly false. All right, so now if it's exactly false, let's preview that again. I'll move above and I'll say, uh, I'll call myself James today, and 
and we'll say select anyone you've spoken to. Let's just drag these people in. And now below, there we are. There they are. John, Charles, and Frank are our alters. And now we can collect data about those alters and exclude ego. Finally, you'll notice that in the ordinal bin, we now have this little filter symbol to suggest that only some of the nodes are going to be filtered in into your data. That concludes the tutorial on how to create or manage ego level data in here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.